Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome to this Let's Build of the Tau XV88 Battlesuit. This is the broadside battlesuit, and I'm just trying to get the box open here. And this is the new one, the new one that I've been waiting to do for a while now. Um, the old one came with lots of metal, and it was horrible, and this is the remodeled version. Uh, it's been out for a while, but this is the first time I've built one, so this is going to be good to do. Just having a quick look at that instructions, and then I throw them in the bin. So, first things first, let's remove some of the parts off the sprues. Uh, I used some clippers here, as always, same ones I always use, the ones I just got cheaply off the internet. A um, lot better than using a knife. Um, you can do it a lot quicker, a lot easier, and then clean them up afterwards. And I'm just removing the parts for the main uh, middle part of the uh, lower body here. And now I'm going to uh, just tidy up those bits and remove any of the pointy bits that are left over from cutting them off. Remove any mould lines or any mistakes or anything like that from the moulding process. And then I'm just using my liquid poly here to glue the middle section together. This is just a normal liquid poly, very similar to the stuff that you get at Games Workshop. The only difference is the bottle's about three times as big for the same price. And now I've just popped the legs off and I'm tidying them up. The legs on this model are a lot better than they were on the previous one. And uh, they're a lot better than they are on the XV8s as well. A couple of little extra bits that you have to stick on on these ones. But they, uh, I think they do look cool. And then I'm just putting a little bit of glue in the pegs at the bottom. And these pegs are slightly vulnerable. They're slightly... Yeah, they are still a little bit flexible. However, um, they're a lot more secure and the feet fit a lot more better than they did in the other model. Well, after I've got both feet up, it's time to glue it to the uh, lower torso, so a bit of glue in each of those. And because there's no pin, um, you can pretty much position this how you like. Um, however, the legs are in a particular stance. Uh, you would have to adjust quite a lot of different bits on bobs to get that in any other way. But they do fit quite nicely, quite neatly. And just a little bit of glue to the feet to secure it to the base is all fine and fantastic. There we go. With this particular liquid poly you do get a few seconds of adjustment once you push them together before it starts setting properly. But uh, that's all you really need. Right, now for the upper body. A little bit more complex than it used to be. There's several different parts that come together. However, this time it actually fits together properly, unlike the uh, top parts that you used to get on the XV8 battle suits. It, uh, they were a little bit fiddly, and sometimes the back, the back just didn't fit to the front properly. But um, the various different parts here, you can see I'm holding them together without any glue, just making sure that I'm happy that they're fitting correctly, that I've got the right bit in the right place, and that there's no bits of plastic sticking off it that shouldn't be on there. And when I'm happy, I will just add that glue and then stick the bit on that I've been waiting to do. There we go. So, just a little bit of glue on the back to add the last piece there. And that's pretty much the upper torso done. So there's like a uh, little generator part that... Uh, needs to be stuck on the back so I just stuck that on there and then it's time to pop it on. Now this bit does have a pin as well as a socket and ball so that makes it quite handy for um, getting in place. So it will be upright if you want anything but upright you're going to need to remove that little pin but uh, there we go that will go in quite nicely. Just cleaning up some more parts here, and as you can see, I, when I'm cleaning up, I'm uh, cutting towards myself. And uh, after cleaning up the head, just a little bit of glue, and it pops in quite nicely. So yeah, I was just saying, you uh, I was cutting towards myself there with the knife, I don't recommend you do that. But now for the arms, and this is the interesting part for me, because these new um, heavy yield missile pods, or, or uh, whatever they are, I haven't uh, double checked yet, but... Uh, 
they are a new thing to put together. I haven't put anything like this together before, and they were. Uh, they did come in uh, a few different little pieces that needed putting together. I was surprised about the number of parts, but um, it wasn't too bad. And then here you can see I'm just holding it on the model uh, to see how it looks, to see how it might go, and also thinking about how I'm going to magnet this up because uh, I haven't had a plan. I was just kind of working it out as I've gone along. Now here I've got um, two little um, kind of support brackets or or um, support system mounts. Um, and what I've done is I've just drilled a little hole in the top of the mounts. Now these normally um, just have a little socket on so that you can uh, just slot the support system in. But I've drilled a hole where that socket was and I've just added some super glue. And here you can see I've got a missile pod from a model I've already made with a magnet in, and I'm just using that to make sure I've got these magnets in the same sort of polarity. So just double check in here, yep, got that the right way, and I will then place that magnet in the hole with the super glue. And then we'll be able to then later um, magnet up uh, the support systems, and they will be able to be popped onto these little support nodules. Well, with those support nodules uh, magneted up, it's time to make the uh, other main weapon. I believe this is the uh, heavy rail rifle. Uh, not a lot to make up on the first parts of this. You have to just uh, do the front part. As you can see, I'm just dabbing a bit of glue and, and then making sure that all the uh, mold lines are removed there. And fantastic, there we go. There are a few other little bits that you need to stick onto that weapon. Uh, it, I do like the new weapon, it does look good, obviously I'm disappointed that we're, the weapon isn't as powerful as it used to be in the old codex, but um, it does look pretty cool, and uh, it does do its jobs in the right place. So here again, without any glue, I'm just seeing how it all looks like it's going to fit together, making sure it's in the right position, making sure I haven't got any extra bits of plastic, and thinking about where I'm going to be putting those magnets. I decide that I'm going to glue the uh, left arm into the gun. Uh, I wasn't sure about that at first, but I decided that that's the case and that's what I was going to do. So a little bit of glue in there, make sure that fits. Yep, that looks like it lines up okay. So I decided that these, uh, he needed to lose his little balls. So uh, I, got my, uh, I got my pliers and I just cut his little balls off there on his side. Normally these would be on um, to for you allow to glue the arms on, but that's not going to be the case with this one. So I cut them off, just clean them up with my, with my knife, and then I'm using a 3.5mm drill bit just to clear out some of the extra bits inside uh, the holes here. Make sure there's enough room for the magnets that I'm going to place in there. There we go. And here is what happens if you're not careful. <laughs> yeah, you have to be very careful when doing this. Do it very slowly and don't do it towards your own hand. Do it against a solid surface. Now, as you can see here, I've just placed a magnet where the uh, where his balls used to be. And um, then I've filled the sockets with green stuff. After filling the sockets with green stuff, I'm placing magnets in, as you can see. So I'm just, uh, I've done one, and this second one, I'm just putting the magnet on the first arm to make sure I get the second arm the correct polarity. So I'm just lifting off with a knife, and then placing it onto the green stuff, sliding it in, and then just pushing it in with my fingers. And that's that's the uh, that's a fairly easy thing to do. Just uh, make sure that the uh, socket is nice and full of green stuff and pop the magnet in. And then it's the same thing for the other weapon as well, so for the rail, heavy rail rifle, um, just making sure that that uh, socket there is full of green stuff and just cutting off any excess with my knife here. I use a different blade when I'm working with green stuff. And then transferring a magnet from the missile arms over to the rail rifle arm to make sure that it's the right way round, to make sure the magnets are all the right way round. I'm pushing in with my thumb. And 
and then the same in the other arm so that's now uh, all four arms with the magnets in so uh, I guess we'll give it a try ideally you want to let the green stuff set properly before you do this but there we go it's in and it comes off quite nicely so that that looks like it's going to work okay and the missile pods the only problem with this particular way of doing it uh, they don't stand upwards they do kind of like droop down a little bit by um, but I think that stance the model looks like he's just walking along with his missile pods down by his side uh, walking along into battle and of course he's big and hard so he doesn't need to keep them pointing at the enemy all the time but no um, there's probably different ways that you could uh, improve that to make the missile pods uh, stand up but we uh, I decided no I was, I was quite happy with them hanging down so those nodules that we uh, the support nodules for putting the support systems on that uh, we put magnets in earlier it's about time I got them stuck onto the model this is where they stick on so uh, it's just some normal liquid poly on there and uh, just pop them both on there we go give them a little bit of a hold and press perfect now for the uh, smart missile system this one's a lot better than the old one again uh, there's lots of improvements been made on this the uh, games workshop really did a fantastic job um, the old metal missile pods were a nightmare along with various other parts of the model but uh, here you can see I've cut them out uh, cleaned them up and just dab a glue just to stick the two halves together uh, let's do the other one and there we go just leave them to set for a moment and then we'll get them magneted up as well and we'll have them up there because they go on top of those um, support nodules that we stuck on just a moment ago so I'll just put one magnet on here you can see I'm using the support modules to make sure that uh, I've got the magnet the correct way round just slide it onto my knife and then I'm just popping it directly on top of the smart muscle system I'm just super gluing it down I'm not uh, drilling it in or anything like that or putting any green stuff um, I think it works okay it gives it this uh, little extra swivel factor and uh, once it's all painted it all will look fine and dandy anyway well uh, now on to the um, Twinlink Plasma Rifle. This is one of the support system pieces that you use to make the Twinlink Plasma Rifle. Just removing the little uh, nodule that sticks out and that normally um, goes into the support nodules on the shoulders there and we're going to be putting a magnet in that later. But for now just a little bit of uh, liquid poly and we will put the Plasma Rifles in, mount them up, make sure that they're all nice and straight as well because once because they uh, they do have a tendency to be wonky in this bit but there we go and just adjusting it slightly to make sure that they're both in line nice and straight okay so as you can see here I'm just uh, getting a little bit of super glue out and I've got a magnet on top of the magnet that's already in the support nodule again just to make sure I have the right polarity and I lift that off with my knife and place it onto the bottom of the plasma rifles so as you can see here there's three different techniques um, got four putting magnets on different items you can just glue the magnet directly to the side you can embed it with green stuff you could use liquid green stuff, you can use bigger uh, the, the standard green stuff and then you can also melt holes instead of drilling holes if you have um, a hot drill bit on a gas stove um, but to be honest that it can be a little bit more tricky and a lot more messy I do recommend drilling um, if you can now there's uh, that missile pod um, the smart missile just needs to have a magnet of its own Popping that on with super glue again, making sure it's in the centre. Yep, there we go. And that can also go onto the uh, support nodule if we need to. Now I have a one millimetre drill bit here, 
and I'm just very carefully and gently drilling tiny holes in all the support systems that you see that I've cut out um, and cleaned up uh, that are on the cutting mat here beneath me. I'm just having a close look, you're know, making sure that that's the right depth. It doesn't want to be too deep. And then I've got a one millimeter magnet that I'm using again. I've just dropped it onto the support nodule and I'm just using my knife to lift off that tiny magnet. And uh, then I'm going to super glue it into that hole. So let's see. Um, let's let's put the super glue directly on the magnet here. There we go. Just dab it on the end. That'll be plenty. You don't want too much. And then push the magnet into the hole like that. And because the support module is so small, a one millimeter magnet is plenty to hold it up. And then I just repeated the process with all the different support systems that you see there on the right hand side. So time now to make up those drones, um, cutting them out as normal. They're very similar to all the other drones. The only difference is, is that these ones have a couple of little extra bits in the middle that you can see here that I'm just gluing in uh, because they're uh, missile drones. I haven't yet used these missile drones in a battle, but um, I am looking forward to doing so in the future to see how it works with the rest of the army. And um, once I've made one up, there we are, we're just making the second one up now. And uh, this one, uh, I think it's got two antennas on it. And as you can see, I didn't put any glue on when I put it on the stand, and that means I can store it away better. But there we go. There's um, the main model missile pods and you can see we can put the rail rifle there um, let's see smart missile system I'm going to put them at an angle about like that that looks good just making sure it all fits together quite nicely before finishing off and then here you can see I've got the uh, seeker missile I've got the twin link plasmas there they look quite nice up on the shoulder and all the support systems. Well, there we go. Uh, let's have a closer look at the model here. Um, I think that looks fantastic. I did quite enjoy building it. I've got two more to build before we uh, put them all into the army. We'll have a nice little squad of three, I think. Um, and then we'll add them to the army and move on. But I think they, they do look good. It's a lot easier to put together um, than the old ones. Uh, Games Workshop did a good job there. And also, if you're interested in magneting it up, that's how I did it. If you've got any suggestions and questions, feel free to pop them in the comments. If this has been a useful video, then remember to give it a like. It helps me out immensely. But um, thank you very much for watching. That's all for now. And until I see you next time, goodbye. <laughs>